name is Anil Vadula. I'm a cataract and refractive surgeon. Um, <clears throat> my journey started uh, educationally at Duke University, where I uh, studied mathematics and physics. And uh, like we were talking about earlier, you know, um, kind of in my third year uh, studying Einsteinian relativity, I you know realized, you know, perhaps this is not you know my field, my chosen field. Um, Mainly because I think that I realized, you know, um, uh, certain things about myself that, that I wouldn't be able to accomplish uh, you know, had I chosen uh, a field like theoretical physics, uh, A, interacting with people, <clears throat> B, um, you know, what my actual potential was. And, and so uh, at that moment, I sort of take, took a 180 degree turn, but not 100%. And um, I thought, well, what in physics you know, could I do that where I could actually help people, maybe more some real world applications. So I studied lasers, I went into the laser lab, and that's when I started to think, okay, well, lasers and, uh, you know, physics and ophthalmology and studying optics, this is pretty cool stuff. And perhaps I should kind of spend more time here. So I spent a summer in the laboratory, in the physics laboratory, uh, studying kind of optics and laser physics. And, and, um, <clears throat> and the next year I came back to Duke and I said, I think, you know, I'd like to pursue something in medicine, mainly because I want to understand, you know, phys how physics can really apply to, to patient care and help people. Uh, and so that seemed like the most real world application. Um, <clears throat> So uh, I switched my majors to uh, medicine and, uh, and applied for medical school that, that next year. And um, so you know, fast forward a couple of years, uh, I ended up choosing Yale for medical school and I'm honored to consider myself a Yale grad uh, for multiple reasons. I think the Yale medical system is incredible. I think um, it gives you, it, it plants the seed of what you need to be a great physician. Um, however, what, what it does is give you this freedom and the Yale system is all about this freedom. We're going to give you this core understanding, but we're going to let each person branch off and, and sort of examine different aspects of what they find most exciting about medicine. And so it was not really a rigid criterion. Everyone laughs. They say, oh, you, yeah, Yale, you, you don't have grades, you don't have tests. And it's true for the first two years, we don't have grades and tests. But I think it's that, that independence and, and that understanding that everyone is here <clears throat> with this kind of energy to learn and ultimately understand that it's that energy to learn to be able to provide either patient, amazing patient care or, or advanced science in some incredible way that's going to to make a, a real difference and um, <clears throat> so it's that yields kind of uh, backbone I think that that I that has also helped me in that unique background from from trying to study physics and some lasers to, to now going into medicine and then ultimately pursuing ophthalmology sort of brought the whole kind of picture together. Um, so after Yale, uh, I spent a year doing a research um, at a Howard Hughes Fellowship at the Baskin Kamara Institute. I came down to Miami and what, a, what an incredible place Miami is. You know? Here we are uh, now, some would say, if it, if it wasn't always true, maybe one of the best places to be in the world. Uh, and I've embraced it. I, I love my, so many things about my, my culture, you know, just uh, the infusion of, kind of uh, Latin American culture and, and, and the mainstream US and the Cuban population and everything that they've done and all the great things that they provide for the community. And, um, and, and so, you know, it was an amazing educational experience. We got to do basic science research and a study. I studied, um, you know, ocular immunology, and I had some great mentors who really uh, kind of drove home some of the things that I love so much about uh, you know, bringing, you know, bringing the world of science to to the patient. And, um, and then I ended up. Uh, going back, uh, finishing my last year at med school, and then um, applied for a residency in ophthalmology and uh, ended up coming back to Miami um, and to, to pursue my uh, three years of uh, residency in ophthalmology and do a year of fellowship in cataract and refractive surgery, um, which was again another four incredible years, uh, hard, you know, hard years of learning. 
um, not as much kind of, uh, you know, independent pursuits, because I think once you start your residency uh, or any sort of uh, pursuit in medicine, but residency and fellowship in particular, you know, the Yale system works to to a certain degree, but but once you're uh, in medical, when, once you're in your residency, you have to just learn the basics of, of you know, how to operate, how to, to how to um, diagnose patients. And, and there's not, that's one thing where you can't, you can read as much as you want, but you're not going to be able to, <clears throat> you know, just uh, be able to be a good practicing physician until, until you've gone through those basic steps. And I think that's the beginning of, of I think, everyone's journey. Uh, so in one of our evaluations, you have the potential to be a great doctor. And in, in many ways, when you're sitting there at the age of 31, you know, finishing your fellowship, uh, you, can be, you can be taken aback by that. But when you live in the real world, you see that's very true. Because once you open your practice, once you start, you start to kind of become a real world physician. And, and that involves so many things just about spending time like oh I, I diagnosing something as quickly or it's about how you are able to communicate that with the patient listening to, to, to the patient learning from the patient being able to take what they're telling you and synthesize that material and, and provide them a path they can follow you know there's some people who could follow path a and others can follow path b and you need to be able to kind of bring that all together and, and then, uh, you know, deliver a message to, to someone that they can actually execute to help themselves. Um, the other thing, you know, is also surgically. I think just as you get more experience, as you, you know, every case you do, every kind of um, bump in the road that you've hit, you've, you've learned something about how, you know, how to do things better. And, and every new article you read, and, and, every theoretical sort of uh, scientific paper kind of guides you a little bit more.